Let's make some beef enchiladas today. You'll need a pound and a half or a little more of ground beef. You'll need about two to three tablespoons of flour, some corn tortillas. You'll need an onion. You'll need some salt and pepper for seasoning. You'll need some Monterey Jack cheese. This has got cheddar mixed in with it. You can use just cheddar, whatever you'd like. This, you'll need a little bit of tomato paste to go in the sauce, some chili powder, you'll need cumin, some oil for the sauce. This is avocado oil. You can use olive oil or vegetable oil. You need two cups of chicken broth. And at the very end, you'll need just a splash, it's probably not even a half a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. So let's get started. Okay, onion chopped, let's get it in the pan. I put a little oil in the skillet and let's brown this up. Okay, our ground beef and onions getting brown, but you wanna cook it quite a bit longer than this. Try to get it a little bit brown. I'll put some salt and some pepper. Put just a little bit of cumin. You'll put some more in the sauce, so about a teaspoon of cumin and about a teaspoon or two of chili powder. Just gives it a little bit of a flavor inside the tortilla. The sauce will have plenty of flavor itself also. Let's let that just keep cooking. I want it to get a little bit brown. Let all that water evaporate out of it. And in the meantime, we'll get our cheese grated. You can kind of tell how much more brown that meat is. It's just about ready. This made a little bit of fat, but I'm not draining that because that's where our flavor is. I'll put this to the side and let it cool. We have our cheese grated. We'll come back. Sorry, I was doing a little salsa dance there. I'm gonna put in about two tablespoons of oil so we can put our chili powder and cumin in there. You wanna be careful, just bring this up to medium. You wanna be very careful about over browning or burning your spices because that would taste very badly. We just wanna lightly toast those and get that oil flavored in there when that gets when that gets good mixed up we will add our flour good. I think you can see that just be careful not to burn it turn the side down just a little bit and I'm gonna put in I said some tomato sauce earlier that. Ooh, that hot. It's a little, getting a little bit hot. For your tomato paste, or tomato paste rather, you just need about two tablespoons. Just want to mash that in. Get that mixed in with your chili powder, cumin, and oil. Okay. And go ahead and put your flour in. For the flour, Flour will taste raw, so if you cook that, just mash it down and cook that. A couple of minutes the flour will cook. So essentially you've made like a roux with chili powder and cumin and flour and then your tomato paste. Also a little tip, tomato paste is so good to add to a lot of things, but it, 
a lot of times you don't need very much so I just save that or get the tomato paste in a tube if you can find it All right, so we're ready to put in our chicken broth I'm just going to keep whisking this in and it'll eventually break all of that up that roux will break up and mix in the flour will help to thicken it as well as the chili powder so just whisk quickly get all that incorporated it smells wonderful so that's going to cook on medium to low heat just watch it bring it up to just barely a bubble and let it get thick mm, smells so good Hey, I hope you can see our sauce is nice and thickened up. You can see how it's slowly coming off the spoon. It's almost there. So I'm going to set that off the stove and let it cool just a little. And it will thicken up as it cools as well. It smells great. And I also wanted to say if you have salted your chicken broth, you know, you probably won't need to add salt to the sauce, <clears throat> but you do need to taste it to be sure. And authentically, some enchilada has just a pinch of cinnamon, and I know that a lot of people don't want to put cinnamon in anything savory, but it does add just a little bit of just something special. And I'm going to put a splash, just about half a teaspoon of the apple cider vinegar. Let that cool, and we will soften our tortillas and assemble our enchiladas. All right, before we put together our enchiladas, I'm going to put just a little sauce in the bottom of a baking dish. Use any baking dish you would like. Just need a little in there. We're ready to soften our tortillas and fill them and roll them up. I have some oil that's just barely warm. You do not want to fry these. You just want to keep the oil warm. A lot of times people dip the um, tortillas into the sauce and that's okay too. Um, just, you just want to get them pliable so they're not ripping and tearing. And I find that it's a little bit less messy. If we just do it in a little bit of oil, it will not make them greasy or oily. There's not enough to soften them, as you can tell, just by bending them because they're not soft. That would rip. So there, that one's pretty soft too. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do when we roll them and put them in our dish. Hope you all can see. I've tried to cut down on the glare, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You want to put your filling not in the middle, but just up as much cheese as you'd like on there. And a little beef. And so we're just going to try to put that right there and pull it. A little bit as we roll and then we're just going to place that seam side down in our dish and I'm going to continue to roll those and fill the dish up. Okay. All the enchiladas are rolled and placed in a dish. Those you can just lay the two long ways there and I find that softening them in a skillet is much better than, it's, it's wet, much less messy than dipping it in the sauce. And they're going to be covered with the sauce anyway. So I find that to work better for me. Just be careful and not fry them. I'm going to cover them with the sauce and cheese. We're going to cover them with aluminum foil and bake them. All right. Put our sauce over the top. Just 
spread it out. It'll go down in there as it cooks and gets hotter. Everything will steam. And it doesn't look like a lot of sauce, but it'll be plenty by the time. You can just make sure that it gets coated all around. That, um, yeah. That will steam. And also, the leftover meat, I had some left over. You can sprinkle it on the top. I chose to keep it. Let's put your cheese on top too. Um, you can keep it if you're making soup or chili later in the week. Just keep the, re keep the rest of it and you can add it to that. That's what I will be doing, but if you didn't do that, you could just sprinkle it on the top and it'll kind of go down between the enchiladas. I'm going to cover this with aluminum foil and bake it on 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes or so. We'll uncover it and let the cheese get a little bit bubbly. And I wanted to pop back in before I put this in the oven. I did put a little bit more cheese that I had that we like it really cheesy. Um, so I did add a little bit more if you would like to do that. So I'm going to cover this up and see what it looks like in 30 minutes. I thought I would share what I'm serving alongside my enchiladas. I have some chopped tomatoes and sour cream, a little bit of cilantro, some shredded lettuce, and we are eating some refried beans as well. But you could do whatever you liked. Okay, our enchiladas are out of the oven after 30 minutes. I'm going to pop them back in the oven for about 10 minutes just to let that cheese get a little bit brown. And here we are. They smell so good and they are so beautiful. I love the corn tortillas a lot better than the flour because they will not get soggy and they hold together better when you're getting them out of the dish. And here's our final product. Yum. Please like and subscribe to Beth's Kitchen.